Oh wait, one minute. Hey, ChatGPT, can you explain who Raul the Rockstar is? Hi. Let's talk about Rahul the Rockstar. Rahul is a kid with a big dream to make the world a better place through technology. He's not just dreaming, he's doing. Rahul has taught at numerous colleges about future technology, sharing his knowledge and passion. He's even taught classes at Google, believe it or not. But Rahul doesn't stop at colleges. He takes his mission online, offering free classes on social media platforms like Clubhouse, making learning accessible to everyone. He's also quite the influencer on Instagram, YouTube, and across most social media, where he shares his love for technology and how it can improve our lives. One of Rahul's coolest achievements, he's created his own robot. This isn't just a hobby for him. It's a step towards his goal of using technology to better the world. Rahul loves speaking at events because it gives him a platform to inspire others and spread his message even further. And on that note, thank you, Rahul, for inviting me to speak at TEDx Azadi. It's been an honor to share this space with you and talk about the transformative power of technology. Thank you, Chad GPT. <laughs> what it said is actually true. I do want to make the world a better place. Today, I'm here to give you all a glimpse of my life, what I did, the guidance I got, and how I could make a difference. Now, when I was small, I always wanted to, you know, make a difference, you know, be somebody. I actually went to my father and I asked him, how can I make a difference? He told me to learn the basics first and uh, to give accurate information always. He also told me one important thing about, you know, to question everything, to not believe anything blindly. And one of the ways he told me was through the internet. He taught me how to use the internet and over time I learned, you know, to filter out fake information from accurate information. Now, let's rewind back to 2017. Basically, 2017, I actually used to see my father go for long distance runs. And one day I was like, Papa, can I join you? He was a little hesitant at first. Then he said, okay, let's go for a trial run. And I, jo uh, I joined him. But the problem was I started to get tired. So what uh, I told my father and he said, if we can go to the next milestone. I ran till there, I started to get tired again. But without even knowing it, I was home. Because after that, he told me if I can go to the next milestone and next. And my father told me, I ran 2.1 kilometers. That's when I understood. If you enjoy something and do it, you will have fun doing it. <laughs> And actually, when he understood I wanted to pursue it, he actually got me a coach that trained Olympians. Now, next year, disaster struck, fled. For the uh, people who lived in Kerala, they know it was a big disaster. And even myself, I saw my house full of people getting calls to uh, get them rescued and transfer, uh, you know, get them rescue items. I saw my father having control over the whole Kochi metro for two days. That's when he understood anybody can make a difference, you know, be anyone. So what I did was that I used to watch a lot of YouTube videos that time. And one of the YouTubers I used to watch was Mr. Beast. And I was like, I want to be him because he gives away money and earns money through YouTube. So he has a cycle where he can live and he can also give money, like help people. I wanted to do something like that. And that's when I created my YouTube channel. Now, 2019, my stepmother came into my life and she suggested if uh, I could change my school to public school. Now, at the same time, I actually started to do folk dance. <laughs> and it was by a teacher who actually taught a lot of students and whose students got first place, second place in most of the competitions. And even I was able to grab second place. <laughs> now, another year passed by, 2020, I was actually with my mother in Bangalore. And at that time, I experimented with a lot of YouTube videos. I got access to Adobe Premiere Pro, one of the best video editors 
from my father as he worked in a dome. And I, at the same time, I used my mother's laptop to use the software. And 2022, I was able to get to know a lot more about technology. I even rooted my phone because basically root phones, you can have the latest Android look because I really wanted that look and it was a pretty hectic process. Now, at the same time, like I said, my father worked in Adobe. So I, uh, they held competitions every year. And first year I was able to get second place for web design. And next year I was able to get first place for editing a video for uh, the topic metaverse part of future technology. Yes, by that time, I wanted to know what is coming in the future regarding technology because I've already used a lot of technology. So I wanted to know what's coming. And I created my own NFT then too. Basically, it's like a picture and you can sell it. It's part of future tech. Now, let's zoom out of technology for a second. And what at that time, I also was a part of, you know, a lot of skills and I was part of Scout too in my school. Now, I was also part of Shastra Mela. Now, zooming back into technology, I, I saw my father using Clubhouse a lot. And uh, one day I was like, I'll join too. And no one joined my rooms for a couple of, you know, days. And I started my own room. Basically, Clubhouse is an app where you can talk to people and get to know them. Uh, around the world, actually, you can talk to people anonymously. So at that time, I started my own room. No one joined. And I started to join rooms. And I was able to get a lot of information through that app and give a lot of information to. Now, Around the same time, a lot of parents asked me if I could take classes for their children. I happily agreed. Also, uh, I was able to take classes for US kids because through the Clubhouse app, a lot of organizations were also listening to my classes, you could say. So I, because of that, I could also start earning. Now, 2023. So, there was a small problem with those classes. I had to obviously sleep. And for them, it was night time. For me, it was night time. For them, it was morning. Obviously, the school time. So after 12.30, I was not able to answer those kids' doubts. That's when I made a game, like a clone of me, which I could ask questions to. And it could also reply in my way and how I explain stuff basically like a replication of me. I showed it to my school uh, IT expo and it was pretty successful. And at 2020, uh, the same time, I was also able to take it to Shastra Mela, which uh, the robot, I was able to make the robot through the OS of this game and with my friend Zay, who helped me make the body. Now, uh, because of that robot, I was able to get a lot of success. That's why I'm standing here too. I was able to go to a lot of events, do a lot of interviews. And it was a big thing for me because I, will to, I was able to reach my aim of making the world a better place through technology. <laughs> now, I'll stop talking about my life, <laughs> my boring life. Even ChatGPT might have found it boring. Let's see how you can use AI, even if you know, you're a doctor, teacher, a carpenter, a neuroscientist, anybody, you can use AI. There's a popular quote, AI won't take your jobs, but someone using AI will, for sure. Here's the thing, if you use AI, your productivity will go here. For example, I, may, I can make presentations, basically the presentation I make will take two to three weeks. But if you generate with the AI, I can make a present, better presentation in like two hours, not two weeks. Just an example. Now, AI is part of a bigger group, future tech. Basically, future technology is basically technology that's around the corner. That includes artificial intelligence, blockchain, metaverse, crypto, and more. Basically, like AI and all these are already here. And some technologies are just about to come. Now, what is AI? Let's 
tell me, I'll tell you an example. Let's take the word AI. Artificial intelligence. Artificial means something that's not natural. Intelligence means something that can take information and use that information. It's like us human. But this is artificial. So that means we are the ones who have created this. That's pretty much what AI means. It's not that complicated. Now, oh wait, I forgot to put the image. Hey, uh, Raul uh, AI, can you put, uh, make an image of a human bot equal to a uh, robot brain kind of image? Okay, cool. I've generated an image that visually represents the idea of a human brain being equal to a robot brain with an equal sign in between them. This illustration can help you explain how the complexity and capabilities of human and robot brains can be considered similar in certain aspects despite their fundamental differences. Oh, it's done. Here it is. Thank you. That was a long explanation. I created that with AI. I'll tell you how I made it. I did it for free too. Anyway, so like the image shows, robot brain is pretty much like a human brain. I'll tell you how. So for that, let's zoom out and see how us humans get a new idea. Basically, think like this. So for a new idea, for example, food delivery, you know, getting food from a restaurant, you can just download it through an app like Zomato or Swiggy. What this does, for that idea, the idea of restaurant and the idea of, uh, you know, career, taking one place to another, mixing both of those gives us the idea of a delivery. Pretty much that's how humans think. They mix idea and create a new idea rather than just, just coming up with a new idea that is not possible. And that is how human thinks too. It that's how robots like AI thinks too. It makes a lot of idea and puts it to one idea to create a new idea, not just two, like a lot. For example, there are AI image generators which you can just ask, you know, image, for example, a dog in space, and it will create an image with it know because it knows how a dog looks like and a space looks like. Boom! An image with a dog in space. It's that is like simplified. It's a lot more complicated than by like that, but I'm just trying to say it thinks pretty much like a human. Now, it can, AI can do a lot and a lot more stuff too. Like I showed you that video that was done with a free AI. It can create videos, edit videos, generate videos. It can help answer questions. I use it for my studies too. Uh, and research for my YouTube channel and you know, Instagram, all my social media. It can, you know, even drive cars and guess what? You are actually using AI right now. How? If you're watching YouTube, you might notice whenever you, you know, open YouTube and you see videos that you like, it's pretty much AI thinking and predicting what you might like. Now, AI can do a lot and a lot more stuff, not just this, like so much more just like what a brain can do. Okay. So the future is exciting. I'll tell you my view on how the future might look like. So you all might have used the VR headset and like uh, recently Facebook Meta announced their VR headset and there are AR glasses. So basically through that you can see stuff and basically they are the next mobile phones or smartphones. You can see stuff, you can buy stuff, you can do a lot of stuff in them. And it is actually fully air controlled. You can, you know, click everything and it's amazing. Basically a glass where you can click stuff. And that is much more better than a normal phone. Even you have contact lenses which can do, that is what is going to come according to me. Like contact lenses are lenses for the people who have eye problem. They have that. So now they can use this, you know, not now, that is going to come according to my vision. So they'll be able to use that to see stuff and you know, that is going to be the virtual world that we're going to live in. Everything will be buying stuff through crypto. Everything will be decentralized, you know, not controlled by one company. Like all the social medias are controlled by Facebook, Instagram and WhatsApp. They all are, you know, controlled by one company. So it will not be centralized control. Everything will be decentralized. 
um, I'm not going to too scientific of that, but everything, for example, a chair will be NFTs in the virtual world. They'll be like these, you know, stuff that we'll be buying, like a house in that world. Now, that's how I feel that that virtual world is going to look like. Just, you know, my vision. Anyway, that's pretty much it. <laughs> I hope it was not too boring. Uh, thank you for listening to my presentation. I hope you liked it.